Hopefully. Okay, we have, uh, we're on item 23, SB 1469. Senator, you have the floor. Thank you so much, um, Chair and members. So as um, we all know, California has a severe housing crisis, which was only exacerbated by the recent fires and mudslides where we lost even more units. And fortunately, one of the quickest and in a way easiest solutions, though it's not the only, but is in our own homes and backyards. And our colleague from Fremont, Senator Wykowski, has uh, helped the legislature recognize that and has authored groundbreaking legislation on these granny units or accessory dwelling units, which is the focus of my bill also. And uh, what my bill does is adds to the um, process the, the facilitation of ADUs and JDUs that the legislature has already begun. And what it does is addresses a few additional barriers. For example, it allows up to one ADU or one JDU on an existing single family lot. It allows ADUs within multifamily buildings, which so far has not been. It removes local fees to reduce construction costs, and that is something we are in discussion about to um, minimize the impacts on schools and the revenue to schools and such, and it's a, a conversation that Senator McGuire and I are, are uh, deeply engaged in and will be addressed further in his committee. And it, uh, but it also allows local governments to cl have clear limits or requirements for, for example, fire or life safety purposes. And then finally, it directs our Housing and Community Development uh, Department to establish a small building code standard by 2020. Um, so with me to uh, present is a uh, local um, a builder of ADUs and also uh, I also and that's Deborah Sanderson and I also have Denise Pinkston here for technical support so go okay, ahead thank Deborah. You. Uh, witnesses please wants to go first hello good afternoon my name is Debbie Sanderson I'm a retired local government planner and co-chair of the ADU Task Force, which is an association of volunteer professionals who are working to identify and remove obstacles to building ADUs. My colleagues and I are moved to do this work during our family time and our retirement time because we believe very deeply that ADUs and JADUs are essential. They are far more affordable and faster to build than other forms of housing. They create housing options where increasingly there are none. They allow us to change our homes to serve the needs of our families and friends and caregivers and students. And they preserve the existing communities. Uh, so it's housing plus preserving communities. During the past year, we have uh, acquired significant firsthand knowledge of the problems encountered in the field when people are trying to build ADUs. This bill focuses on solving these problems, which are like a second layer of obstacles that couldn't be seen previously. So, Some specifics. Uh, it incorporates best practices from fire recovery zones and from pro-ADU cities. It allows an ADU and a junior JADU on the same parcel. It allows uh, more ADU construction within the multifamily structures, which has helped City of San Francisco a lot. It allows a modest by right ADU, which gives homeowners certainty. So that means there's a minimum size, height, size that you can build in your backyard. Uh, it closes the loopholes in some of the current ADU parking standards. Uh, and that means more parcels will be eligible. Uh, reduces the cost of building ADUs. So the, this bill will make it faster and cheaper to build ADUs, uh, especially for low and moderate income homeowners and homeowners with small parcels. Thank you. Hi, I'm Denise Pinkston. Um, I too am a former uh, current planning chief, although I'm not yet retired. And uh, I have to say that the folks who drafted this bill 
include many of the ranks of current planning chiefs, current, today's current planning chiefs and former, who understand intimately what goes wrong in local government when homeowners go to the counter to try and pull a building permit, and some of the gamesmanship that can happen at the zoning counter or at the city council when angry neighbors want one thing and homeowners are trying to do something else. And in the case of ADUs, they, are, they have a special place in California housing policy for the state to intervene because they're the only state action that can go from policy to actual permit in under 12 months. And Senator Wachowski um, demonstrated that very aptly. The, the advantages of it were pointed out by my colleague, but I want to point out that ADU experts around the state compiled their knowledge and working experience with trying to roll out California's current law to prepare this bill including folks at UC Berkeley, UCLA, LA Moss, which is a nonprofit that builds ADUs in the affordable communities and Latino neighborhoods in Los Angeles, um, the current planning chief of Sonoma County, who's been working 18-hour days trying to get units built in the fire recovery zone and has found that ADUs are the only quick-to-deliver unit type that is affordable and um, has been and worked on the build to... Um, make sure the standards worked not so that Sonoma County is not the only jurisdiction in the state that's trying to do ADUs. So the bill both removes barriers that exist. It promotes best practices, as Debbie pointed out. And what the state role in this is to create essentially a level playing field so that every community equally participates in the production of housing. We all have, stu we all have teachers living in our who need to live in our communities who work there. We all have nurses and doctors. We're not all producing housing for the folks we need in every community. ADUs are a way of doing that almost invisibly. Thank you. Uh, speakers in favor, please. Uh, just <laughs> identify yourself and... Uh, your position. Thank you. Hi, my name is Abu Bakar NDI. I am here representing Working Partnerships USA. Uh, we represent 100,000 working people in San Jose and in Santa Clara County. Uh, we're here to uh, speak in support, if amended, uh, to make sure that these housing units are actually housing and not short term rentals. Thank you very much. Your name and um, your position on the bill, please. Jennifer Spack, on behalf of the California Association of Realtors, here in support. So Sin Madinat with Lighthouse Public Affairs here on behalf of Habitat for Humanity California in support of the bill. Thank you. Michael Lane with the Nonprofit Housing Association Northern California in support. Emily Eichner on behalf of the California Building Industry Association in support. Tiffany Fan on behalf of Bridge Housing in support. Louis Morante with California MB in support. Adrian Covert with the Bay Area Council in support. Okay. Uh, can we have opponents, please, come forward? Welcome. Come up here. Have a seat. Thank you. Yes, have a seat, please. These are opponents. Good afternoon, Senators. Adam Quinones on behalf of the Association of California Water Agencies. We are opposed unless amended on SB 1469. Uh, for the single provision in the bill that would uh, prohibit any fees being charged to these accessory dwelling units. Um, currently, our water agencies charge capacity or connection fees, and the accessory dwelling unit being built would exceed the existing capacity of the current connection. Um, so in, in, in some localities, <laughs> Senator Wykowski, I want to make sure I address that. Uh, some localities charge a little bit differently. Um, so it varies, but I know in the East Bay, that's certainly how they're charging. Um, and so for us, it's really those provisions. We've been working with Senator Wykowski on SB 831. Uh, hopeful we can come to a resolution and something that is a, a little bit more uh, workable for, for our member agencies. Um, we're hopeful to see those kinds of amendments in this bill as well. Uh, happy to work with the Senator um, to try and get there. But right now we are opposed unless amended. Okay, thank you. Other speakers? Chris Lee on behalf of the California State Association of Counties, respectfully in opposition. Um, I think it's important to note that we just passed bills in 2016, which went into effect on January 1, 2017. And now local agencies are nearing the process of completing updates to their ordinances. And so this bill has to be viewed in light of those recent changes, especially one of the provisions which would require, unlike existing law, that we designate places where ADUs shall be permitted. It reverses that framework 
framework and says instead the ordinances have to say where they are not allowed. So basically, every local agency that has worked in good faith to implement SB 1069 and AB 2299 from 2016 is going to have to reopen their process again. And so I think we have a, a broad policy concern about changing the entire framework of how the ADU law works so close to the implementation date of the last major changes. Um, I think Aqua pointed out some good issues related to the fee provisions. And while we have slightly different statutory underpinnings for the fees that we charge for impacts related to new development, we share those concerns. And so I think it was good that the proponents called out Sonoma County and you know the good work that they're doing with their ordinance. But it also points out the fact that despite the conception that most of these units are going to be very small and not have a lot of impacts, especially in the unincorporated context where parcels are a lot bigger, people are building large ADUs. I've seen plans for a company that does a four bedroom, two bathroom, less than 1,200 square foot unit. So there will be people, there will be families living in those units, there will be infrastructure impacts, and to the extent that we don't allow agencies to recoup the infrastructure cost of those types of developments. I think what we're actually going to see is an outcome that this committee wouldn't want to see, which is a reduction in the size of units that are, that are being allowed. Thank you. Uh, speaker's opponent, opposing. Mike Ropeson here on behalf of the California Municipal Utilities Association and really just um, I, I reiterate everything that previous speakers have said and just add that you know page nine of the analysis rightly points out the fact that that there, there's a study to be done on local development fees for ADUs is due in uh, June of 2019. The, the analysis recommends the, 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 the idea that uh, may, maybe the fee provisions in this bill be removed until the, that study is complete and it would only also add that you know municipal utilities Utilities that come out and provide a service they're providing a service to the people who are putting an ADU in that that service costs somebody some money and it's there's it's not free some somebody's going to pay and if it's not going to be paid by the, the the person who's putting in the ADU it's going to be spread out and the, the next door neighbor is going to have to pay for it so we're just looking for some some um, some fairness in the, in the fee provisions so um, thank you speakers Tracy, Tracy Ryan Royal County representative of California in opposition Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, members, Julian DeVores on behalf of the Urban Counties of California, also in opposition. Lauren De Valencia representing the American Planning Association in opposition. Jason Ryan, Lee California Cities in opposition. Mm -hmm. Ian Padilla with the Coalition for Adequate School Housing in opposition. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, do we have questions or comments from the committee? Perhaps. Uh, Senator Gaines and perhaps Senator Skinner can respond to any of those concerns that were raised. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Senator Skinner, if I could just get some clarity on this issue of um, fees uh, from a municipality. So let's say there's a connection fee. Um, can that issue be addressed? Because it seems that um, yeah. there could be a cost incurred by the municipality. Yes. And I would want to make sure that they were getting repaid for whatever services that were rendered. <laughs> Um, appreciate that uh, um, on the question of fees this bill next goes to government and finance and uh, I am working with the chair in that committee on that question and we are uh, working I know that uh, Senator Wykowski is also on the fee, fee portion of his uh, bill and and uh, I believe that it's our intent that they would be they would mirror each other and that we will um, work closely with the chair of the next committee to work that out okay great thank you and then the other was the Wykowski bill uh, 831 uh, do they conflict or are they complementary and could you explain that um, there is uh, one key difference which is owner occupancy and uh, my bill would require owner occupancy, and uh, that is uh, the our motivation. There is that we've seen now a number of very um, large corporate entities buying up single-family homes in areas like Sacramento and others, and we do not want our effort to try to increase secondary units to necessarily result in and a big speculative increase. 
And so that is the, one of the motivations for our owner occupancy requirement. But Senator Wykowski and I are, will be um, meeting and talking about how to uh, bring some of the issues together. And uh, I'm optimistic that we will uh, try to land somewhere good on that. But that is one of the motivation for our inclusion of the owner occupancy portion. Great. Thank you. Senator Dodd. It's, 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 it's my understanding that there's no break in the line like a sewer line. So nobody has to come out from the sewer district or the city if they're doing it. Also, city water or any of those things that there's, you know, there's certainly no costs. And I really believe that the amendments that have been taken uh, render this bill a very positive bill. I think, the, I, I think the impacts to local government are de minimis, you know, in this regard. And, you know, nothing that I've heard... Uh, you know, with either the Wachowski bill in a, in a different committee or here has uh, convinced me otherwise. So I'll be supporting this bill. Thank you. Senator McGuire. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, just want to say thank you to Senator Skinner uh, as well as Senator Wachowski. Um, there's been a lot of discussion uh, about this issue, and, and Senator Skinner has been very open, uh, including her fantastic team in regards to sewer and water um, hookup fees, which will be taken care of in the next policy committee. And we heard a lot of issues about schools. Um, and so uh, Senator Wykowski as well, Senator Skinner, uh, again, next policy committee. And the reason I bring this up here is because there's been, we've heard some folks today, it, they will be capped. School impact fees will be capped at 3,000. And the reason being is um, wanting to be able to give certainty to those who are developing. And if you actually take a look at, let's just, we include sewer, water, schools in uh, electric, for example, it is going to be a drastic, drastic difference between what fee schedule is now uh, to what it is uh, even with uh, sewer, water, schools, and electric utilities. It's going to be, uh, I don't want to make up the percentage, but about two-thirds of what the cost would be uh, because we're looking at uh, average ADU could be anywhere between sixty dollars to $100,000 depending on what you're developing right now uh, if it's a, a non-attached unit. So. Um, but also wanting to be able to take care of uh, those important issues for local government. So I uh, know that may not make all local governments happy, but I think that uh, thanks to Senator Skinner and Senator Wykowski uh, coming a, a long way uh, to be able to assist. Right. Um, I got a question for the planners. Okay, I'm, I'm from a big city, San Jose, and... We have ATUs already. They're called illegal dwellings in the yes. backyards of people yes, yes. or in the garage. They're illegal. They're all over the whole city. I mean, you know, big cities have these things, you know, this kind of thing. Do you think this law would uh, create a safer community if we had this law? And can you comment on the, um, the hookup fees? Because I see the public interest in having... You know, for a big city, kind of looking at it from my standpoint, San Jose, I would say they're just all over the place. I mean, to be honest about it, it's out of control. It's out of control right now with the housing problems in San Jose. It's out of control. They're just all over the place. We need to have some, we need to have some uh, laws, but we can't have laws that are too complicated. We have to have laws that are clear and easy for somebody to go in and feel free to kind of do the job of getting a good quality, simple dwelling unit built with, as opposed to having some dangerous fire trap. Standard. Because we've had fires in these things and people have died, quite frankly. I mean, you know, it's, it's like a, it's a life safety thing for me. I'm, I'm looking at it from yes. that standpoint. So maybe the planners can comment on that. I think, I think you're absolutely right. We didn't talk about that. But if you don't make That's the zoning right. rules even, People, the only way for someone who has to have an ADU to take care of an elder or a family member is to do it illegally without a building permit and hide. Yeah. And uh, th so there are some communities in California, the cities of Bell and Los Angeles, where more than half of the housing produced are illegal ADUs that those owners can never legalize because the zoning rules don't allow it. They don't meet minimum lot size, which this bill gets rid of. They're, and so they, even if they wanted to get a building permit, the zoning rules would keep them from pulling a permit. So this bill cleans a lot of that up, and it does it for everybody. So homeowners can now come forth 
and get a building permit and make that unit safe and legal. Um, otherwise, they just can't. I remember one of our colleagues took me on a trip down to San Diego. He was, he took me to, to lunch and then he took me to the neighborhood. We, he grew up in uh, Barrio Logan and he drove down the street and he says, well, there's where I live. And I said, oh, in that house? He goes, no. Drive down the street, down the hill a little bit. So we drove down the hill. He says, in the basement down there, be underneath the house, is where I live. So that's kind of a, that was Senator De Leon. And um, Senator De Leon showed me his house that he lived underneath. He lived in a basement. It's where he grew up, in a basement underneath the, the, the regular house. And, you know, this, this is, this, folks, this is, this is like something that could help the, the, the health and welfare for its safety, health safety for people. So we gotta, we gotta start talking about these as like a health and safety issue for, yes. for our communities in, 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 in helping people have safe, clean housing, you know, which is what, what our goal is. So that's why I support the bill. I'd like to hear about the water hookup. Did you guys look at that? Is that something? So we've been As Senator um, McGuire pointed out, we are, we are working on that. Yeah, I want to hear what they have to say about that. Sure. So um, water hookup fees tend to be imposed at very, very highly varying rates in the state. Yeah. Some places charge $70,000 a unit for water. Some of them charge five or six. Mm -hmm. um, in many cases, the house has a water line. And the house is underoccupied. So if you know if you have a two or three thousand square foot house and it's just you and your husband, like you know, like my house, um, I could easily put an ADU in my backyard and not pay a new water hookup fee and not use any more water than has been used in that house for a hundred years. So on the one hand, there's a fair argument that you don't need to charge a water hookup fee every time you do an ADU because sixty percent of California single family homes are underoccupied compared to their design density. So we could, we could build 60% as many homes as we have now without tapping water capacity, at least in theory. However, it's reasonable that people get some amount of fees. So my understanding is the amendments that are being proposed and taken allow some modest fees for water and sewer hookups and a modest fee for schools that aren't so punitive that you tip the balance towards homeowners building them illegally with no permits at all. And that's the tipping point you're trying to hit with the bill. I don't want to get too high because that would discourage people exactly. from doing it. Now they just go back to the illegal, the old, the old way of putting in some illegal thing in there, and that kind of just defeats the whole thing. If you do it illegally, you don't pay the fees. Yeah. So anyway, Senator, Senator McGuire. And I would also add that if the uh, if the ADU is going to be attached to the home, there would be no fee. Uh, as well, or if it's an existing structure, uh, there would be no fee. So uh, it is clarified within those amendments uh, as well in both of the bills. Sir Wachowski. For all the members who are seeing double, the, the good uh, senator from Berkeley and I are going to sit down. There are, there are differences that are outlined in the, uh, in the analysis on page uh, 10. For the moment, I'm just going to stay off of it because I don't want people to be more confused. Um, of what's going on, but we're working with uh, government finance, and we'll get something to the floor that everybody can support. Okay, thank you, Senator. Senator uh, other questions? You may close, Senator. Um, thank you, and thank you, um, Chair, for pointing out that uh, we have thousands of these units up and down the state that were done illegally because of our restrictive measures, and the, you can really look at this in addition to being something to address our housing crisis as a family measure because many families will be able to stay in their home if they are able to do these types of units. Other um, families will be able to have family members live with them. And in the, uh, I think this is now is the appropriate time compared to the to the uh, opposition who said that we should wait just because these new rules went into effect. This is exactly when, since local government is in the middle of fixing theirs to add these and, may, and add these rules so that they can fix it all at once. And um, I will note that between the period of 2015 to 2016, homelessness in California grew by 14%. Okay, thank you. Senator, um, call the roll, please. This is Senate Bill 1469 by Senator Skinner. The motion is due pass and re refer to the Committee on Governance and Finance. Senator Bell? Aye. Bell I. Canella? Allen? Dodd? Aye. 
Dot I Gaines, Gaggiani, McGuire, McGuire I, Morrell, Roth, Skinner, I. Skinner I, Vidak, Wachowski, Wiener. Four zero. Four zero. Four votes in favor. We'll leave the roll open for absent members. Thank you. You can go on to your next bill, Senator. Thank you.